Hi all, my name is Serge, and this video is on a tricky topic. Revit topography can be a little nasty, and so I hope this video can help you. In this video, I will show you the best workflow for creating roads, curves, and footpaths using Revit native topo services. So let's get to it. The best place to start is always with setup. On the screen, you can see two scope boxes. I will use these to set up project and true normal. It is always wise to rename guide, nothing fancy. Here I have used site total and site subject. Let's switch over to a sectional view and set up some project levels. This is basic stuff. We will rename ground floor AHD as the height datum. FFL for the finished floor level. And finally, top of site, representing the highest point of our site. Next, we have to associate the scope boxes to each of the levels and groups. Now we have to adjust our scope box constraints. We can close out this part of the video by adjusting the scale to something more traditional, 1 to 1000. This following part of the video focuses on the survey. In this example, the survey is in DWG format and it contains no feeding points. Now it should be noted, the survey is imported just for reference. Here, I import the survey using the create from import option and then I select the specify points file. To finalize the import part of the video, we need to specify the units. Make sure you check these beforehand. We can commence setting up the True North and Project North orientations for the project. As we can see, the scope boxes are fairly small in comparison to our site, so we will redefine these again on the floor level plane. This concept basically realigns the views so that a specific element is parallel or perpendicular to a title block, such as the title boundary shown on the screen. Zooming in, we can see that the site boundary is offset from a lane in true north. I know that this angle is 39.5, so I'll just go ahead and make that adjustment. I can select the box and rotate. I can now move the box into position and adjust the extents. Remember, at the start of the video when I had two scope boxes displayed, these were named Site, Total, and Site, Subject. Site Total, as the name suggests, will enclose the whole topo surface and will be used in the True North orientation. This can be used for something like a site plan. The Site Subject will focus on the building area and will be used with the Project North orientation. This can be used for floor plans. We can now apply the extents of these scope boxes to our associated True North and Project North views. Following on, you will notice that the top of surface is not visible. This is because this view has a view template applied. This template has default view range setting. We can revise this setting to capture the whole site. So in order to keep this as simple as possible, we will set the view depth to the height data. The cut plane will be set above the highest point of the site so that we can see the whole site in plan. Furthermore, this is why we set a level dedicated to the highest point of the project site at the beginning of this tutorial.
Time for a top tip. You may have noticed that as the mouse cursor passes over the topo surface, it highlights as Revit is anticipating you want to click on it. So to stop this from happening, pin the topo surface and then in the bottom right hand corner, deselect the pin. You can now click freely over the topo surface without any interference. The DWG import is quite detailed and contains many layers, most of which we don't need. So to remove or hide them, do the following. Use the query function to identify the layer you would like to keep. Here, I want to keep the S boundary linear layer. Then in the graphic overrides, find the imported categories tab and then select all layers. Then finish off by reselecting only the layer you need. In this case, S boundary linear. The result is a nice, clean and clear survey with a single layer visible. This is the title boundary. We need to sketch over this to help us define River calls property lines. You can find this tool on the massing and site tab. Select property line. When prompted, pick create by sketching. Then use the pick lines tool to complete the sketch. You can use the tab keyboard function to accelerate the sketch. To access the B data, click on edit table. Here you will find all the values of the boundary. The next part of the tutorial will guide you through how to recreate the site to suit any proposed works. Start by outlining the building and the car park areas with the detailed line tool. Once done, switch to 3D view. And then note that the topo surface was initially modeled in the existing phase. Switch this to new construction, or whatever you call your proposed phase. The surface should change to a slightly grayish tone. Then move on up to the massing and site tab and pick graded region. Then select Create a new topo surface exactly like the existing one. Revit has now duplicated the surface and note edit mode has been activated. I like to edit in plan and this is why I sketched the building outline previously. In this example, the floor level of the building was at 28 meters 150. Now start to remove and place new points as required. It is important to understand the form of the topo surface beforehand to ensure that you edit the site correctly. In this example, I want to remove part of the swell in the left-hand back corner and then cut away at high points within the building envelope. Now that is complete, switch back to 3D to reveal the change. Notice the red contours representing the existing site and the black contours representing the new. This is because the show all face filter is applied. Change the filter to previous and new to reveal the proposed site only. Now that the building zone has been somewhat leveled, I can add a building pad. On the massing and site tab, pick building pad. Then use the sketch tools accordingly. And be sure to place the pad at the correct level. Here I want finished floor level. 
switch to 3D level to see how the pad sits on the side. Then switch back to plan view and repeat the steps in order to complete the car park. Once the car park pad has been created, switch to 3D to see how everything is looking. This reveals a sizable gap between the car park and the surface edge. To recreate this manually would really take some time. So to help me along, I'd like to use this app. This is downloadable from the Autodesk App Store. Launch the app. and select the Align Topo tool. Then select Align Topography. Pick the car park pad, followed by Finish on the Options bar, and ending by picking the topo surface. The app will then do its thing. Now, because our site is complex, the result was not perfect, but it does give us plenty to work with and saves lots of time. I can now tie off any loose ends by editing the topo surface once more.